Welcome to Field Plus Healthy Test Kitchen. Spring is almost here, and we were just talking about soups that was good for spring and summer. I want to make a soup that's good served hot, but even more amazing when it's served cold. And this recipe of borscht really kind of meets both criteria. So today we're gonna to make an amazing vegetarian borscht soup. Before we start, support us by hitting the subscribe button. You will also get healthy cooking videos like this. Let's get started. The borscht soup is actually a Ukrainian specialty. Interestingly though, it's also found in Hong Kong. It's very popular in Hong Kong Western style restaurants. We have a lot of ingredients in front of us, but they're actually relatively simple and easy to find. Let's go through them as we put them into the pot. My first job today is actually shredding beets. We're using about six beets for this recipe. I earlier peeled the beets, and guess what? If you are working with beets, I really recommend gloves. I have a mandolin here. Be careful when using a mandolin, but I really want to shred it, so. It will bring out the uh, flavor much faster, and when you eat it cold, it really, um, the texture is really, oh, this world. When beet is really nice, it's also very sweet. Now that we got the beet shredded, the next job is actually to make a spice pack. To make a spice pack, you can use cheesecloth. I actually have some uh, large coffee filter, two bay leaves here, and I have some uh, peppercorn seed and some coriander seed. So what I need to do is also uh, add three cloves of garlic. I fold it up like a dumpling, okay? Just fold it in on the side. Fold it in on the side like this. Okay, and then I wrap it around. I usually use another piece to make sure that none of the peppercorn and the coriander comes out. And then all you need to do is, this is a latex free rubber band. And now you have a spice pack ready to go. The next step is to go ahead and turn on the simmering pot. I have a simmering pot here. If you don't, go ahead and use a big stock pot if you like. Now that it's heated, go ahead and add the butter. So I have a silicone spatula. I have three tablespoons of uh, room temperature butter here. Make it easier to melt down. If you look at it, it will actually you coat the bottom of this pan and the butter is melting relatively quickly. What I'm doing is that I'm actually gonna use the bottom of this pan to lightly fry the leek and cabbage. So earlier today, I had got a chance to actually shred the leek and cabbage together. So it's actually from the last video I made. So if you have not watched that, go ahead and click that right there. You can uh, watch the vegan broth I have made. And now that the butter is melted, so I'm gonna go ahead and first start with the onion. So this is one small onion. So I'm gonna let this really take on a little bit of that uh, butter and heat right here. Mmm, look at this onion. It's starting to get a little bit of translucent. It's exactly what we want. And it's really kind of taking on the butter. Okay, now that the onion is sufficiently fried, we're gonna go ahead and add the shredded leek and cabbage into it. The reason why we shred it is that we really want to have it incorporated into the shredded beets when we're eating it later. Also the leeks and onion and leeks will actually shrink a lot once it heats up a little bit more. Once the efficient water released from leeks and onions, we can go ahead and add the mushroom. I got two different types of mushroom today. So this is called the brown shimiji mushroom. So they are small, brown head mushrooms. I think this will add a little bit of different texture into the chew of our um, broth. Okay, now that the mushroom and the leeks and cabbage have taken on some color, we're gonna go ahead and add the satake mushroom in there with all along with all the liquid. And this is the vegan stock I made last episode. Next job, the main event is the beets. Put the, all the beets you have shredded right into the bowl. Make sure you stir it all in there. I got some crushed tomatoes here. Got some tomato paste. 
stir it all together. Mmm. It's taking on this amazing fragrance. We have some pickled beets here. So we have some beets and its juice along with it. We really do want the vinegar inside here. So don't be shy with it. Make sure you have the pickled beets juice inside. Dill and the spice pack. I'm gonna go ahead and add the spice pack in here now and add the dill in there. Last but not least, you need some water. So what you're trying to do is that you're trying to put enough water that will cover the top of all the mixture that you have done, okay? Just perfect. Okay. So this recipe calls for just about a liter of water in here. Don't worry, I did not forget about the potatoes. What we're trying to do is that we're gonna add the potatoes in about half an hour before we serve. We want to have the potatoes still stay in this dice shape and not um, fall onto starches. So that's why we didn't add it in there. For this simmering pot, it will take about two hours to simmer. But if you have a stove top pot, you can probably do it in an hour. So I will leave this for two hours and come back and see what's going on. Let's take a look. Mm. Wow, it really boils down and smells great. I think it's a great time to add the potatoes. So, and then you will only take about 15 to 20 minutes and then the potatoes will be ready to go. Stir right in. Because this way, the potatoes uh, will stay in little dice format. If not, if we boil it for two hours, it will just turn into starch. So let this cook for another 15 to, uh, 30, 15 to 30 minutes. Um, we'll come back and check out on it. Now that the potatoes have cooked for 15 minutes, let's see what's going on. Mmm. Okay. You can see and poke into the side of the potato for, by your ladle to make sure they're cooked, but looks pretty good to me. Everything in here. There you go, we got a borscht soup. I'm gonna add some sour cream to mine. Just stir right inside. I love how it turned from this deep, deep red color into this pinkish color. It's just, you can eat this soup hot or cold. I actually like it cold a lot. So if you like, you can store it in your fridge. This soup also freezes really well. So if you have a freezing bag, you can definitely freeze a portion of it away. Let's give this a try. I love how dill play with the beets. There's the acids and the sweetness in beets that really plays well together. A lot of people think beets uh, can help with fighting cancer because of the reversal toll. It's a great antioxidant that fights free radical in your body. It's also really high in iron. It will help with blood production and bone health. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe and get more of these healthy cooking videos. If you have any questions, write us an email or po uh, post a comment below. If you want to talk to us on social media, you can get us on Instagram or Twitter at Fuel Plus. Thanks for watching.